Hey guys, and welcome to a new video. Dude, it, it, it's getting cold outside, you know? We have November, it's almost Christmas, and uh, yeah, what is like the better time to gamble some uh, cold drinks, right? Because today, we're actually gambling 60 sets of Winter's Empress, and this little divination card got introduced in 314, should be uh, Ultimatum League, and it gives you basically a circle of fear with three implicit synthesized, like three implicit modifiers, right? The circle of fear is basically uh, this ring over here. It's the Herald of Ice ring from the synthesized maps, basically, right? And they are actually trash. Unless, unless you hit the good modifiers. So these rings, I think they have five different modifiers. There is at least four that I can think of right now. It's like um, Herald of Life, Mana Reservation, Maximum, Cold Resistance, Flat Cold Resistance, Buff Effect, and Cold Damage. I think those are the five modifiers that you can hit. Most of them, absolute trash. Implicit, absolute trash. But... If you're lucky, you can get some very big currency. There is even Circle of Fear rings that are going for a mirror. So, the question is, what kind of stats should a ring like that have to be worth a mirror or hundreds of exalts, basically, right? And the only combination when it comes to those five modifiers is basically the buff effect and increased cold damage. I have this one over here. This is basically, regardless the implicit modifiers, if the ring has uh, cold damage and buff effect, the ring should be worth like three exalts at this part. I, like this two and a half, like one ring, fuck this. But all the rest, starting on three exalts with shit modifiers, okay? So what modifiers could the implicit have to be called valuable? We, I would say like the first things that I'm thinking of would be Ellie Weakness, uh, I don't know, Frostbite or something like that, right? We have Power Charge, uh, Frenzy Charge, we have Gain uh, Onslaught on hit, we have uh, Arcane Surge on hit, for example, right? There is like possible really, really good implicit modifiers, and if you're able to hit a ring like that that has cold damage and buff effect and like a Power Charge or like Onslaught or something like that, these rings could go for a lot of exalts, like a lot of exalts. Okay, before we go into the gambling, let's take a look at the brine down. Um, today's gamble is brought to you by Mr. Stunjuk, and he brought the 60 Winters and Brass because, hey, it's getting cold outside, right? And he bought the cards in bulk for around about 50 chaos a piece. Um, they go for, I think, 35 if you like single handedly buy them, but as you see, nobody has stock. Everybody on this list has one stock, and if you find people that actually have more than two cards or something like that, you definitely gonna pay some extra for that. He said he bought an average of 50 chaos. That means one set with two cards uh, is basically 100 chaos times 60 is round about 6,000 chaos with today's exalt exchange ratio from 1 to 145 makes it a gamble for 41.38 exalts. So I made just like a small little list here. We call it shit ring just for five chaos, whatever, you know, this is going to be all the rings that have like cold resistance, maximum cold or, or like any shit modifier combinations, right? I actually thought that um, a combination of like buff effect and mana reservation efficiency might also be good, but they are like five chaos or something like that. Then we check like um, reservation efficiency and cold damage. They started like five or 10 chaos, right? So the only valuable combination seems to be like buff effect and uh, cold damage. So yeah. That's pretty much it. We have to get more uh, than 40x out of it. As I said, if it's a shit ring, we're just gonna make like a count, like, I don't know, like 24 rings uh, worth 5 chaos. We don't care really about that. The double damage would be with shit modifiers. That's like 3 exalts price here, right? And the pog ring would be something that has double damage and actually valuable implicits that could be worth something. It doesn't have to be like a cane search. It could be like increased maximum life, increased cold damage, or alley damage with attacks, or I don't know, like these kind of things could up the price by a couple of exalts on each. Good. I would say without further ado, oh, by the way, um, this card seems to be only obtainable through the Gambler card, the Stack Deck, and the Void card. I don't see any information here, maybe this is just outdated, that this card can drop from bosses or if there's any specific maps. It seems like it just comes out of uh, gambling decks, more or less, right? Good. Enough talking. I would say we're gonna pop in the first, uh, let's do 12 at a time, I would say, right? Seems like a good thing. And uh, we start with the first one, which is increased cold damage and buff effect. And increased damage, fire res, and lightning radius. Dude, it's almost max rolled here as well. 59 and 60. 
cute. Yeah, it's so it's easy five six exalts, man. Easy. Dude, with that rolls, it's it's one off perfect on the suffixes, man. So, and then we have like it's some increased damage, maybe. We have like 5x, 16x, 39x. Well, we can calculate that. We can easily calculate that. I mean, you're Let's do this at the side, okay? That's like easy 5x. Easy, not even a question, man. Look at the rolls, dude. It's one off perfect. Good. Next ring. Cold damage, mana reservation efficiency. That would be one of the shitty rings, I would say. Then we have um, cold damage and cold resistance. Absolutely garbage. These rings could be valuable, even though the, the Herald of Ice stats are not the best. If you get something like Ellie Weakness or a Power Charge or something like that, that would definitely... Uh, sell as well, right? But here with cold damage resistance, absolutely no. Then we have a cold resistance and buff effect with shit implicits, whatever. Then we have a cold damage and buff effect. Easy, 13 intelligence, minus cold damage from hits. The next three exalts or four exalts, dude. Easy money, dude. Cold damage, mana reservation, cold resistance. Buff effect, cold resistance. Okay, good. Then we have the next one. Buff effect, mana reservation efficiency with endurance charge. Mm, I don't think so. Then we have cold damage and buff effect. Yo, easy, dude. And another four exalts. What the fuck? Yo, it's so easy to get those, dude. Cold damage and Herald device buff effect. I mean, regardless of the implicits, it's minimum three exalts, right? Good, next one. Cold resistance and mana reservation efficiency. That's garbage. Then we have um Cold Damage per Frenzy Charge would actually be really, really good. But the problem is mana reservation efficiency and one max cold resistance. Dude, if you have flat cold damage per frenzy charge on one of these, no no no. That's big bank, man. That's big bank. But this one, I don't think so. Uh then we have mana reservation and cold. That's Bullshit as well. Then we have um, cold damage and buff effect with life gained for each enemy hit with attacks. Easy 3 4 exalts. Then we have cold damage and mana reservation efficiency and nothing else. So that's 2, 4, 6, 8 rings where I would say shitty. And those ones we have to price check actually. I think we keep the cold damage buff effect on this side. Uh, the rest we can just pop in here. So let's go for the next 12 sets. You know what? I would actually say just for the quick price check, we're gonna just add every time we get a double damage um, ring, basically, we're just gonna pop it over here to just see the overall um, outcome without any further price checks, right? So, next one. Uh, cold resistance, mana reservation efficiency, garbage. Even though multiplier and cold dress and whatnot, I don't think they will sell at all. Cold damage and maximum cold resistance. Nope, not gonna happen. Then we have max stress. Nope. Cold resistance buff effect. Nope. I always need to check twice because cold damage and cold resistance, they all both roll like 50% or something. Then cold resistance buff effect and shit. Next one. Um, Cold damage and buff effect. Easy. Over here. Then we have cold resistance and one max cold resistance. That's garbage. Then we have cold resistance, mana reservation efficiency, um, buff effect, mana reservation. Nope. Then we have mana reservation and resistance. Nope. Always still checking the implicits because I'm, I'm interested in that. That is damage and mana reservation efficiency. And here we have buff effect and max cold dress. It doesn't seem like we have, we found any. I hope that I just don't overlook like an alley weakness or something like that. Good. That makes it like five of these actually. Dude, as far as I see it right now, that's going to be a nice profit here. I would assume. So, cold damage, cold resistance. Or we were just lucky. Um, Cold resistance and max cold. Nope. And we have... Cold damage and mana reservation efficiency. Nope. Mana reservation. Nope, no, nope, nope. Buff effect, max. And endurance charge, live regen. Nope. Buff effect. Absolutely not. Cold resistance and buff effect. Yikes. Oh no. The streak is over. We should have stopped. So, cold damage and buff effect. Easy. Then we have buff effect, max cold. Then we have mana reservation efficiency. And we have 
Cold damage and buff effect. With extra cold and lightning damage. Easy. Good. That makes it a two more. So two, four, six, seven. On these ones. We are like halfway through the gamble and uh, looking good so far. I think looking good. Then the next 12 cards. Yeah, if we get one big ticket item. Cold damage and mana reservation efficiency. Flammability with cold damage. Ah, oh, nah. Nah, I don't... Unless you would play Call to Fire or something. Nah, I don't think so. Another flammability with cold damage and buff effect and multiplier and crit strike chance. Okay, so what was my thinking about what could we play with flammability? Because this would be the ring that you want to have with that. You know, cold damage and buff effect with flammability, crit multi and crit. If that would be LA weakness, we're talking about probably without price checking 100 exalts or something. But it's the wrong curse. Still, you know, just because of the multipliers could be worth something. Or there is any build like that. Cold damage and mana reservation efficiency. Nope. Uh, cold resistance buff effect. Nope. Then we have cold damage, mana reservation efficiency. Cold resistance buff effect. Nope. Cold damage buff effect. There you go. Next one. Perfect. Then max cold. Then we have... Cold resistance buff effect. Then we have cold damage mana reservation. And we have cold damage cold resistance. Good. That makes it two more onto the list would be nine. But as I said, I think they're going to sell for a lot more. It's just like questioning, uh, like a questionable how much would these rings go for. But we have 12 more to go. Starting off strong. No, actually starting off very weak with mana reservation and maximum resistance. Then we have cold damage buff effect with um, energy shield recharge and life gain on kill. Hmm. I don't know. It's still like cold damage buff effect, right? Easy three exalts. But the implicit weren't that good. Cold damage mana reservation efficiency. Nope. Next one. Cold damage, cold resistance. Cold damage, cold resistance. Following with cold damage buff effect with ES increased chaos and fire resistance. That's over here. Then we have cold damage and buff effect. Easy. And increased damage. Nice. I like it. Cold damage, mana reservation efficiency. Then we have cold resistance with buff effect. Not that good. And the last two cold resistance buff effect together with uh, buff effect and mana reservation efficiency. But I think actually implicit wise, it doesn't look that good. So... How can I quickly check if these are the... I hope these are the only ones, right? So we have three more, makes it 12. That means just by selling those for three XAPs, obviously they are going to be worth more, I think. We almost broke even with that one, right? So now is the question. We're going to do some price checking for the really good ones. I think, like, just increased damage. Um, let me actually check. What do the other have here? So these are the ones that are, we're talking about, right? So, um, increased chaos damage doesn't worth anything. Life gains, hatred, fire damage, chaos damage doesn't seem to be anything. So, uh, fire damage still, global fist damage, lightning damage, flammability for 3x. So, it seems like the flammability doesn't do anything, sadly. Then, minus cold. So, where is the ones that are getting more expensive? Or let's sort them by price, the most expensive first. This one would be cold damage buff effect with early weakness. This is like a 100 exalts ring, as I said before. Here we have the onslaught ring with double damage for 75. Then we have cold damage buff effect with arcane surge for 72. So apparently there is none, uh, none with a maximum power charge. Here, onslaught, arcane surge, these are like the big ticket items. Here with some, I mean, there's like a choke price, right? Like... Some cold damage, yes, nobody's gonna pay 60x for that. No fucking way. Spell damage per power charge is, is also a very, very good modifier that we don't have. So here is another alley weakness um, for 50x. So global multi. So, okay, let's quickly run down. What is the good ones? For increased damage, let's assume... To make this as quick as possible, to be honest... Um, we're gonna add here just chaos on what I think we're gonna get extra. I think for the increased damage, I think we can easily get like an X or so extra. Might be more, right? So let's do 150 chaos for that one. Um, life gain on kill, I don't think this is worth anything more. Chaos damage, increased max ES. I think for the max ES, you probably can get something extra um, with buff effect and cold damage. 
Let me see. Um, 12x. Oof. I guess... Wait. Let's see the extra damage, actually. I'm like hard to say because I don't know what um, what builds these rings are using. But if it's the, if they're energy shield builds, then obviously so five x. So that's like let's say three hundred chaos extra. Then we have twelve x is seven times. Um, no wait, uh, nine times nine times one forty five would be one thousand three hundred. So one six oh five. Good. That would be those rings. Then um, the flammability crit multi. Is definitely worth something. Crit multi. I don't think the crit strike chance, but it's still. I want to just check the global crit multi actually. So let me check this one for multiplier. Um, multiplier. Because the thing is like, yeah, of course there might be rings there and they might have a value, but do they sell? Questionable. Okay, so we have eight, nine, ten, ten, eighteen x. This one. With uh, accuracy, I don't think that these rings sell for 20x. You know, especially since there is one with multi for 8x listed nine days ago. So, can be, I have no idea. Let's just assume it's 8 exalts, then that would make another um, 5 exalts, would be 725. On the multiplier one, right? And crit strike chance, so probably I'll do a thousand chaos, maybe. I mean, the the crit strike chance is also something. Chaos damage with ailments, nope. Then dexterity, cold damage. I think this is the same category as the increased damage, just this time around with um the. Is it really that much? God damn it! Ah, it always takes some time, dude. Cold damage, increased cold damage. We are looking at five exalts roundabout. So two exalts extra is like uh, 290 chaos or something. Should be. Then fire damage, lightning. Nope, that's no extra. Fire increased damage. That's probably the same. So let's add another 290. Uh, intelligence, cold damage taken from hit. Some resistance. Let's just don't add something, but definitely is something. Um, cold ailments might be something. Elemental damage with attack skills, this might be also something. Ally damage with attacks, as I say again, I don't know which kind of builds are using those. Elemental damage with attacks, and there is also the life gained on hit, so... Oh wait, elemental damage with attacks. What am I doing wrong here? Increased elemental damage with attack skills. Increased elemental damage with attack skills. There you go. Um, four exalts, five exalts. So apparently the ones that are using this build, uh, these rings are caster builds. So they probably not gonna um, get any benefits from the attack as well. Let's just let's just flat add like I don't know like uh, one exalt, whatever, hundred fifty chaos, and then we're gonna make our complete uh, rundown, which is like sixteen oh five plus um. 1000 plus the 290, the 290, 150. Let's do 3335, 3335 would make a total of like eight and a half thousand chaos, which that means that we probably made a profit of like 2.6 thousand uh, chaos orbs with today's exalts exchange ratio from 1 to 125 uh, means like round about 18 exalts profit on this gamble. So we basically 40x investment, 60 exalts um, outcome or result basically. Even though I think if you're lucky, um, these rings might even sell for more. I don't know. I just did like this super quick, yo, let's price check like freaking 10 rings uh, in a matter of like five minutes and see the best result. Obviously, there is always a margin. Rings like that could also sell for like a couple more exalts or a couple less exalts roundabout, but definitely. A profitable gambling it seems like especially when you consider you have the chance of getting something really good and the amount of like increased cold damage and buff effect that we actually got was actually quite high i would say or is it average three six nine twelve basically exactly 20 percent chance basically right good all right guys thanks for tuning in thanks for watching and see you in the next video